Dozens dead and hundreds wounded. On September 3rd, the Russian army hit an educational institution and a hospital in Poltava with two ballistic missiles. Nearby residential multi-story buildings had their windows blown out and facades damaged by the blast wave. Piddly. A cowardly and cynical Russian strike took the lives of half a hundred people. Eleven people were released from the rubble. They are being given all the necessary assistance in medical centers in the region. One of the buildings of the Institute of Communications was partially destroyed. The removal of the rubble and the search for victims continues. In the evening of September 2nd, the Russian army shelled Dnipro. The occupiers also attacked Kharkiv, Chernihiv and Zaporizhia. And in the morning of the same day, Russia launched a combined strike on Kyiv. The breeze fell in several districts of the capital. The combined nature of the attack involved the use of cruise and ballistic missiles. This tactic is very dangerous, given the fact that cruise missiles are from different launch points. Then, at the moment they are approaching the target, ballistic missiles are launched, so cruise and ballistic missiles hit pre-selected targets almost simultaneously. During the strike on Kyiv, the Russian military used, among other things, a 48 and 6 dm type missile from the S-400 complex. According to Defense Express, these missiles are dangerous because they are used in surface-to-surface -surface mode and have very low hit accuracy. They also have a rather powerful warhead weighing 180 kilograms and a range of 250 kilometers. Ukrainian air defense managed to shoot it down. They are hitting several points simultaneously in order to once again limit the capabilities of the Ukrainian air defense system at the moment of eliminating the missile threat. But despite this, our defense worked very successfully. It is worth nothing that today the Ukrainian air defense system is echeloned, which means that we have several defense lines. Some Western media called the 9M730 Burevesnik nuclear missile a Russian wonder weapon. American researchers, having studied satellite images, claim to have found a possible location of the nuclear-powered Burevesnik or SSC-X9 Skyfall, as the missile is called in NATO. Using images taken on July 26 by Planet Labs, a commercial satellite firm, the two researchers identified a construction project booting a nuclear warhead storage facility known by two names, Vologda-20 and Chipsara, as the new missile's potential deployment site. The facility is 295 miles north of Moscow. The site is for a large fixed missile system and the only large fixed missile systems that Russia is currently developing in the Skyfall from a Rator publication. Prior to this, the 9M730 Burevesnik was mentioned in Western media in October 2023. At the same time, Russia was probably preparing for another attempt to test this missile. U.S. intelligence confirmed Russia did indeed conduct tests of the Burevesnik. It is known that many were unsuccessful and one in 2019 near Severodvinsk allegedly involved fatalities. In 2023, Putin claimed a successful test of the Burevesnik, but there is no objective data about this, as well as in general about the status of the development. Therefore, there is no evidence to speak about the characteristics of the Burevesnik. Images with appearance of the transport and launch container and the missile itself allegedly filmed back in 2018 were posted in the public access. The missile itself has a fuselage length of at least 12 meters without specifying the launch mass. Against this background, it's hard to understand the fear of Western analysts about the Russian wonder weapon from the publication of Defense Express. Russia continues to expand its range of aviation weapons. The American Institute for the Study of War reported that the Russian Federation has completed tests of a new type of guided aerial bombs. We are talking about FAB 3000 M54. They are equipped with unified planning and correction modules. The accuracy and reliability of the bomb are frankly poor, analysts note. But the mass of three tons, of which 1,200 kilograms is the explosive substance, make the destructive power of the FAB 3000 very low. Large. In the near future, new samples are likely to come into service with Russian air bombardment regiments. Reported by Anastasia Tarnavska, Valeria Nikopelova, UATV News.